factory, they had a very small turbocharger, no intercooler, so when the turbo gets hot... Hey, what's going on? Mad Matt from Budget Boosting again. Today we're going to talk about low-through carburetting and jetting for your performance. I've already started to disassemble the carburetor and you know the parts to take the carburetor off the intake manifold because that is the easiest way to show you how to do it. You can still do this process on the car, you just want to have a lot of rags in place for when you take the side bowls off, a bunch of fuel is going to leak out. So you just want to make sure you're prepared and have plenty of rags to not let the gas get all over, especially on a hot exhaust manifold if you just got done running the car. So I'm just going to show you a quick disassembly and how to take the carburetor off the intake manifold. I've already removed most of the stuff, so I'm just going to pull them off to show you. First, I'm going to remove the carb hat. I've already, you know, unbolted it. Carb hat from the Demon carburetor. I've already taken the retaining bolts holding the carburetor to the intake manifold spacer. I've already disconnected the fuel line, disconnected the throttle, and disconnected the boost sensor. This is where the reading I get to my boost gauge right here. Turbo boost gauge reading right in here. Now I'm going to pull the carburetor off. Since this is the easiest way to jet this carburetor, I'm going to put it in our little uh, work place. Okay. And then you always want to cover your intake so no critters get in here while you're working on your carb. The last thing you want is foreign object damage in your engine. So I'm going to put a nice little cover on there. Now that I have the carburetor off the intake manifold of the car, now I'm going to take the fuel lines that are holding the bowls from expanding and taking off. So I'm going to take off all the stuff and I'm going to show you how I get to the jets. I'm going to take these fuel nipples off. Once I get these fuel nipples off and out of the way, then the bolts will just come off and behind there is the jets. I pre-loosened a lot of these, but of course, sometimes they need a little extra effort. Like so. Now I have this fuel line out of the way. Okay, now I'm going to loosen the bolts one at a time. And of course, mind you, this is the primary. I'm going to do the primary first. I'm going to take out the old jets, which were 76 on the secondaries, 78 on the primary. I'm going to go three down, which is basically, I'm going to go 75 and 73. So 75 for the mains, 73 jets for the secondaries. So now we take these retaining bolts off that hold your uh, bowls on the side to access the jets. Now mind you, this is a great opportunity if you have a carburetor rebuild kit to rebuild your carburetor. Or if you see some old gaskets while you're disassembling, a great opportunity to put new gaskets in if you need them, if they're damaged. This is a Summit rebuild kit for this Mighty Demon carburetor. It also works for Barry Grant, Mighty Demon, and it's got all the little piece parts you'll need to do an efficient, effective rebuild of your carburetors especially if you notice issues while you're disassembling. Also, the gasket that goes between your carburetor and your carb hat. If this gasket you notice is in bad shape, it's a good opportunity to change it as well. And this is the summit part number for this. Brand new gasket, but my gasket's in good shape. I just have it standing by just in case. Always good to have it and not need it, then need it and not have it. Like about everything. All right. Loosen this bowl again. And these primaries should be my 78 jets I'm going to take out and put back in my jet kit. Just getting the rest of these bolts out. Always can be fun sometimes. Plus you're also breaking the seal of the gasket that's in place for, been in place for a while. So, there we go. Nice and gently and easy. And my gasket looks like it's in good shape so far. No breaks, no tears. Set this to the side. And here are my jets for my primaries, right here. These are both the 78 size jets that I'm going to remove. 
and replace them with 75s. So gently, I said gently, <laughs> remove the jet. Break them loose first. Take them out nice and easy because they're brass and they're not very strong. So you don't want to put too much force on there. You can break the ear off of your jet and then you'll have to buy new jets. Not necessary, you know, not necessary to buy new jets. You want to retain them and use them as long as possible. 78 back in the 78 block. 23, 78. I'm going to grab my 75s because that's what I'm going to replace them with. 75 jets. I'll verify the numbers. 75. See the orifice on those is smaller than the 78s I removed. There's another 75. Matching jets. And I'll put those back into the uh, carburetor. Replace the 78s with 75s. This should be a pretty good difference in fuel delivery. Because I was running a little bit rich on the higher end of my throttle. Not with the secondaries on, but the higher end of my primaries, I was running too much fuel. So I jet down a little bit and hopefully be right on the money through all throttle ranges. Kind of finger tighten them first so you don't cross thread anything because you don't want to cross thread a jet. Expensive mistake. Plus you'd have to replace the whole main body of your carburetor. Not good. Emphasis on being gentle with things. Okay. Now that that's done, I'll go put my uh, side back on. Looks like my gaskets are in good shape. So, here we go. Nice and carefully, line up my holes, line up my gasket, make sure this is in place. There we go. This also actuates this. You gotta make sure you got everything lined up. Then I'll go finger tight, and you want to go in a crisscross direction when you're tightening these bolts. Kind of in a crisscross. So you seat them equally. Nice and easy here. Get them all seated. And since my gaskets were in good shape, I don't have to replace them. No tears. All good to go. Get them nice and crisscross torqued. The nice good wrist torque. Or if it's really hard for you to tell torque, use a torque wrench. Around five foot pounds. Okay. Now that the primaries are done, I'm going to do the secondaries, which is what I said I was going to do 73s. And I'm going to replace the 76s with 73s. So 73 and 75 will be my new jet pattern. Okay, just like I did before, loosen all the mounting bolts in a crisscross way. Make sure everything just unseats as smoothly as it seats. This sure beats tuning with a computer chip and a laptop. Just get the equipment alone can cost you thousands of dollars. But with a blow-through carburetor, it's as simple as jetting. Jetting up, jetting down. Okay, I've just tightened the uh, secondary float bowls back on. And you want to go and inspect your work now. Just do a, a second eyes on because once you put it back on your car and put it back on your intake manifold, it's going to be very hard to try to correct any mistakes that you've made. So I caught myself early. When I started to tighten these bolts down, I forgot to make sure my accelerator pump linkage was hooked up because this thing was just kind of free flying. So you want to make sure all these little guys are hooked up before you uh, put it all back together. Check my primaries again. Accelerator pumps are all hooked up good. 
Torque is good. All right, now I can just reverse the process which I started. Put it all back on the car again, and then do a test run, a leak check. While you start it up, make sure there's no leaks. And I'm just gonna do the same process as I did when I removed it. Basically reconnect everything, put the carburetor back on the intake manifold, and then turn the fuel pumps on and check for leaks. Start the engine, check for performance while it's at idle and rev the throttle and everything. And then when I get done with that, I will take it for a test drive and monitor my gauges. Of course, my fuel flow gauge, make sure I'm getting the right fuel pressure that I need. My air fuel ratio gauge to make sure my jetting is now looking better than it did before. I'm running closer to Stoich instead of rich, overly rich or overly lean, because as we know, overly lean can blow engines and melt pistons and all that bad stuff. Where overly rich, you'll be fouling your spark plugs again and again and again and changing them over and over again, wondering, why am I getting stumbling performance and popping out the exhaust? So basically, you're trying to get your engine and your boost performance as close to Stoich, which is the orange on my air fuel mixture, as possible. And of course, you're also monitoring your exhaust temperature as well, because you don't want your exhaust temperature to get too high, because that could also lead, you know, basically the early signs is when you're starting to run lean on your air fuel ratio, the next thing you'll see is high exhaust temperatures. And then when those exhaust temperatures are reached and surpassed, that's when you break engine parts. So it's good to have those very, very important gauges installed in your car. Well, I hope you learned something on jetting for performance for blow through carburetors turbo setups. All right, and thank you for watching. And remember, if you like us, like us on Facebook. Please subscribe to our page. And remember, as always, knowledge is power. It's horsepower.